Ah, the symphony of sleep. We've all been there, nestled snugly in our beds, only to be distracted by the rumbling, hoarse sounds of nighttime. Whether it's a family member sharing the same bed, or the distant echoes of our dead snores coming from another room, snoring seems to be an unavoidable part of the nocturnal soundtrack. But what if I told you there's more to this nighttime memory? Melody than just noisy nuisance. Something a bit more serious, and the reason why you clicked on this video, sleep apnea. Before we talk about sleep apnea, we need to first understand what causes snoring. Almost everyone snores now and then, but did you know that a whopping 44% of people do so regularly? It's all about the way we breathe. During the day, our upper airway ways stay wide open thanks to the pulling forces of the muscles in our neck. The problem happens when these muscles relax during sleep time, making our airways more prone to collapse. Add in the natural inward suction pressure of moving air and voila! You've got yourself some narrowed airways and the air-induced vibrations that we all know as snores. Some individuals snore a lot more more than others, and there are many risk factors that play a role. People with a higher body fat percentage are the most susceptible. Excess fat around the neck can increase the pressure on the airway, making it more likely to narrow or collapse during sleep. Other contributors include smoking, alcohol, poor sleeping positions, age, and nasal problems, all of which potentiate some part of the mechanism we just talked about. Now, does snoring have to concern us? Generally speaking, not really, but for certain individuals, it could be a sign of the most common sleep-related breathing disorder, obstructive sleep apnea, otherwise known as OSA. Complex term, but we're going to break it down. The word apnea refers to a temporary pause in breathing. So if this pause happens because of the nighttime blockage we talked about earlier, that's what we call OSA, or obstructive sleep apnea. Then how is it different from regular snoring? If you have ever gotten kicked out of your own bedroom because of your thunderous snores, you might be feeling the worry creep in. Well, let's clear the air. OSA isn't just about snoring. It's a puzzle with many pieces. Sure, folks with OSA might snore louder than a freight train because the obstruction is much worse. But it's not just the noise. It's the gasping for air and the terrifying moments of choking that accompany it, disrupting sleep like a broken record player. These interruptions trigger mini wake-ups that restore tone to the muscles and open the airways, all without the sleeper even realizing it. And despite these subconscious efforts, waking up refreshed is just a dream for those with OSA. How could they, when their sleep is more like a battlefield than a sanctuary? And let's not forget the endless tirades from their bosses about their constant yawning and sleepiness at work. It's a tough spot to be in, especially when the frustration of not knowing what's causing it all starts to weigh in. Imagine having the most peaceful moment of your day interrupted by wakening spells of gasping and choking, then followed by morning headaches, fatigue, and exhaustion. In addition to those daily struggles, OSA can also cause some long-term complications, such as high blood pressure, decreased sex drive, memory, and mood problems. Many people with OSA, in fact, present with symptoms of depression and seek solace in therapy. Well, yes, depression is a more complex problem than we think it to be, and it can stem from not only psychological but also physical reasons, one of the most common ones being OSA. But here's the silver lining. 
OSA is treatable. And once that treatment kicks in, it's like waving goodbye to all those problems we just talked about. Obstructive sleep apnea is not easy to diagnose since there are a lot of layers to it. Typically, doctors diagnose OSA through a sleep study known as polysomnography, conducted either at a sleep center or at home using portable monitors. This study records various body functions during sleep, including brain activity, eye movement, oxygen levels in the blood, heart rate, and breathing patterns. A doctor may also review the patient's medical history, symptoms, and perform a physical examination. If the sleep study indicates frequent interruptions in breathing, the diagnosis of OSA is confirmed. Treatment options are then discussed based on the severity of the condition. Having understood how OSA happens in the first place, it is easy to grasp how various treatment options can effectively address it. For many individuals, the key solution involves what's known as positive pressure ventilation during sleep, where air is gently applied at a positive pressure to maintain open airways. Alternatively, those with mild disease may opt for more conservative measures such as oral devices. These devices work by gently positioning the jaw forward, thereby preventing airway collapse. More complex treatments, often reserved for the most severe cases of OSA, include surgical modifications to the upper airway structures, neurostimulation of relevant muscles, and radiofrequency ablation techniques. All this, while effective, still sounds like a hassle, especially for those affected. So what else can be done? As I mentioned before in the video, OSA is associated with a high body fat percentage, smoking, poor sleeping positions, and alcohol consumption. Though not easy as well, making some life changes in some cases may prevent OSA from becoming a problem in the first place. As we wrap up our journey through the world of this common sleep disorder, here is the takeaway. For those of you who are heavy snorers, troubled by restless nights and groggy mornings, it might be the right time for a visit to the doctor's office. On the other hand, if you've been fortunate enough to not have the problems we've discussed, maybe it's simply time to enjoy another peaceful slumber. It has been a snoozy journey after all, but regardless of where you find yourself on the sleep spectrum, Here's to hoping for brighter, more energized days ahead. A quick disclaimer before we go, this video is intended for educational purposes only and provides a general overview of obstructive sleep apnea. It is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking it because of something you have seen in this video or elsewhere on the internet. Thirsty for more juicy medical science served with a side of fun? Then don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Share your thoughts or questions in the comments below. I love hearing from you. Until next time, stay curious. Stay awesome, and as always, keep learning!